Niners. Uh, let me ask you guys this question, though. After the Jerry dozens Judy trade. Dozens and dozens of dollars. Knowing yeah. how Andrew think, Berry operates on the edges and the fringes and the draft trades, is it fair to call Andrew Berry the most aggressive general manager in the NFL right now? Mm. How would you fair? decide that? I don't know all yeah, the GMs in the either. NFL to, to, yeah. to, to, to kind of. When you, when you, it was an interesting question because when I first read it last night, I thought, no. But then I thought about what he did last year. And all the moves he made on the defensive front, and again, to Bull's point, yeah, you know, how do you how do you judge that? Yeah, I don't. I'm not as intimately familiar with every other team's right, exactly. moves as I am the Browns. But off the top of my head, I would say he is a very aggressive general manager. No is doubt, he the most aggressive. I don't know. I would say but he's in the top group of aggressive. GMs. I would too. That's yeah, he's in say. the top he's tier. tier yes. a. He's elite. Yeah. He's tier I mean, there's a. no doubt. He is extremely. He's been, he's been, and and I'll, I'll give Jimmy credit for this because he's been willing to spend money. I, I I think the Browns have been. This has been the most aggressive the Browns have been ever. Maybe. Uh, uh, John Dorsey was uh, John Dorsey was aggressive. I think they run neck and neck and aggressive. John Dorsey was really aggressive. Well, you know what I wonder? I wonder if Jimmy didn't finally come to an epiphany that you know, the draft is really a freaking crapshoot. I don't know what yeah. the hell I'm going to get out of the draft. However. I do know what I'm going to get out of free agency. Bull, you mentioned right. that the Bengals have really gone all in. Yeah. yeah. I think that there there is a shift in philosophy in the NFL, and it's been going on for a while. I'm not going to yeah. I'm not going to purport that it's just like happened the last two years. I think it's gradually happened over the last decades, where teams have finally come to the realization that yeah. I don't have time to sit around and wait three because GMs don't. GMs are on that hot seat the day they sit in it. That's right. So are you going to try to get an Anthony Schwartz and a David Bell to save your career? Or are you going to try to get an Amari Cooper and a Jerry Judy to save your Listen, career? Listen, when the Rams said F them picks and when they won a Super Bowl, I think every other team in the You're NFL right. that took was, notice, right? That was it. Because there's more than one way to skin a cat. You can acquire yes. talent in the NFL three different ways, via trade, via free agency, and via the draft. And if one ain't working for you, then damn it, you got two other options that you can explore to make your team better. And what I love about what you said is because I do think that the Rams became the poster child for building through free agency for yeah. now. Yeah. Like, okay, the window's open. We're lacking one piece. Sell the it. farm and go get it. What I love about what the Rams were able to do was they built through free agency. And then when the prototypical NFL clock says you go from the top of the talent cycle to the bottom every seven years or so, mm -hmm. the Rams said, okay, now we got to hit on the draft. Yep. Because that's our asset. That's yeah, what we have. Right. And we don't have first and seconds. Hey, Jay, we, we got, got some breaking fits. news real quick. We finally have a real deal. The Bears and DeAndre Swift, three years, $24 million, according to Mike Garofolo and Ian Rappaport. Wow. That's Eight million a year. Twenty. I guess, uh, not, yeah, eight million a year. Yeah, yeah, I guess the running back market is not dead because no, that's more. <laughs> I, I was thinking. Did, is all that guaranteed, Mike? Uh, th this is all that's the information. Slogan, three year, twenty-four million. That's a slogan deal. for yeah. you. Running back Run market, market ain't dead. dead. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good money for a guy who's only had one good season, really. You know yeah. what? I thought the Eagles misused him last year. I just did. The reason I can say that is he was on my fantasy team. I watched all their they games. They kept running one. What's the and, one dude? Go, 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 whatever. Number fourteen. They kept running him. Yeah, well, game well, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yes. I just thought that I think Swift's a better player. Now you, you make an interesting point. He wasn't the player last year that he was the year before. But I just thought it was a usage problem. Well, I no, I, I just think he's been inconsistent because he's been hurt a lot. He's been a, that's been part of it. I know, but the way they use but him, but he's is a good so, player. Like there would be stretches where, and this used to drive me nuts with the Browns too. Yeah. But critical stretches in the game, big drives where they don't need to pass. Running the ball would be better. Yeah, and the guy who's on the bench are just not being used. Yeah, it's an interesting pickup. I thought I assume I was thinking Swift would get about six million a year. So the fact that he got eight means. Okay, what's Barkley going to get? Well, I wonder, though. Well, how so does that affect it, the Nick Chubb situation if DeAndre Swift's getting $8 million? Andre Swift's young and healthy, well, well, though. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Bull, I think we're living on $2,022. Yeah. This is – we're in the it's inflationary true. The biggest era jump of the cap ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So, Fair point. six in 22 yeah. turns into eight in 24. Yeah, Baker's that's fair. deal, three for 150 guaranteed. On old dollars, that was That's, probably yeah. a good point. three for 75. And so, especially teams that have a lot of cap space, and I, and, and I think the Bears are one of them, even though they've signed a few guys here uh, before free agency, if they've re-signed some guys. The Bears have a lot of cap space. So there's some teams that have like $100 million, $80 million in cap stunning. space. Yeah. By the way, Albert Breer, 
just tweeted, not a, a nothing definitive, but he said, what, uh, the Browns and Texans expected to be very aggressive in looking at defensive tackles. Wow. Which hmm. surprises me. I, I'm, I'm not. Ex- I was not expecting them to spend big money on D tackle when they did already last year. So that's. I know, but some of those were one year deals, were they well, not? But, but they signed. Uh, what's his name? Uh, oh God. What was Tomlinson? Tomlinson, Tomlinson. 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 Tomlinson was paid him like seven. He was a three year deal. He was a three year. Three for fifty one. Yeah. Okay. So I usually you don't pay two defensive line Gosh. defensive tackles big money. But, Am I tripping, Bull? So last yeah. year Chicago was pretty aggressive in free agency. You go sign a back like DeAndre Swift. Yep. I, it, to me, it don't seem like they're tooling up to move on from Justin Fields. It seems like they're tooling up well, to try to see if they're going to move on. I could be wrong, or, but you can look at it this way. Who's going to pick up the 1,000 yards or on average for 1,000 yards for Justin right. Fields out of the running back? That's, out of that's the it, too. It's just, so just, if, they're, if they are ready to move on, they're going to need a threat in the backfield to run the football, and pr- prior to this trade, it was Justin Fields. Because if I'm DeAndre Swift, yeah, definitely I damn sure want to get paid. Yeah. But I don't know what the conversation is like, but, you know, he was just playing for a team that was supposedly a Super Bowl contender. Am yeah. I having a conversation yeah, before only, I go there and wanna, say, like, hey, the money. like, hey, what, what's the situation here before I sign my name on yeah, the bottom yeah, line? But, I don't know if we should read too but, much into it. I think you can look at it one way. of two ways. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at it as, like, wow, the Bears are really going to be – a team that can threaten to move the ball on the ground yeah. compared to, or we're going to lose our best running back in Justin Fields because that's what he was. Yeah. We better put someone back there. The yeah. Bengals have re-signed third string running back Travion Williams. Huge move. <laughs> Huge move. <laughs> uh, that's it for now. But but the, the Swift thing really, you're right, Jay. That's a big that, one. That really shows you that there's going to be a lot of money spent here this week. Yeah. There because will be. for the last bunch of years, running backs have been getting nothing. Nothing. And usually the running backs, even the good ones, have had to wait out. Like, they weren't signing in the first week because the money wasn't there. The fact that the first big deal of free agency is a running back is kind of telling. Yeah, I think that the Bears have – I think they're playing their hand that they are going to move on from Justin Fields. I do. I just I agree. Because – and they identified the running back that they most wanted. Yeah. And they weren't pissing around. They just did it. They got it done. Where's he going to end up? Uh, 14 million, by the way, in Atlanta? guarantees for Swift. So 24 for million Swift. total, oh. 14 guarantees. There, okay. I wonder if there's That's, been a lot of rumors that Kirk Cousins may sign with Atlanta today. Yeah, like if you do Kirk Cousins, then it probably excludes. It does inc- excludes Justin Fields from going to Atlanta. Right, and they, they have traded him to Minnesota. Pittsburgh, I think Pittsburgh was choosing between Justin Fields and Russ Wilson, and the Russ Wilson thing has so much upside. Yeah. yeah. And there's and still some anything. downside to Justin Fields. You just don't right. know. Plus, Man. you have to give up at least one draft Kirk, pick for Kirk Justin Cousins Fields. Kirk Cousins go to right. Atlanta. They instantly compete with Tampa Bay for the division. That's well, true. They, hell, they competed last instantly. year without him. That, that's, that's a power move. Let's yeah. think. If, if Cousins ends up in Tampa Bay let's and Justin Fields is eventually traded, let's think about the possible teams that he could end up on. Uh, New England? Didn't they pass mm. on him on the draft for Mac Jones? <laughs> but it's a new coach now. Yeah. No, Fields was first. Mac Jones was the last guy to take. Right, that's right. Yeah. No, I right. think Fields they wanted was... Justin Fields. And it doesn't matter anyway because Belichick's they not there. Fields, yeah. but he was, but he was gone. Mac Jones was the last one taken when they picked at fifteen. Right. Yeah, Chicago so. traded up ahead of New England, and they took. Uh, they took. Yeah, they what about the out. Raiders? How about the Raiders? The Raiders. Oh, wow, that could be really interesting. Well, his, his former offensive coordinator. Yeah. Luke Getze is the new OC in in Las Vegas. So that would be a reunion yeah. between What about players. Denver? Denver doesn't have a quarterback. I don't know if I man, if I if I'm Justin Fields, I don't want to be nowhere near Sean Payton. Yeah, but he has no he has no say. <laughs> Listen, it, let's it, not go it, over the yeah, top. Sean Payton won a lot of games in New Orleans. I know last year he didn't have his best season. <sighs> that was a while ago, though, boy. That was a while ago. That's all I'm first saying. First of all, Justin Fields has no say. If he gets traded, he's got to go where he's got to go. Well, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. He ain't got yeah. no say, but I'm just saying. Yeah, but if you if you made your feelings aware that like you didn't want to be in it like they'd be foolish to trade for him if he publicly came out <laughs> and said I don't want to be in Denver because yeah. then you're yeah. renting a player and they want they don't want a bridge see in Pittsburgh the only good thing for the Browns with the Russ Wilson deal yeah he's a bridge he's a bridge right he's not a franchise well, Justin Fields on the right team could maybe still be a, a legit starting quarterback I, I don't know he could still be yeah. either or he could be a bridge or he could be the future but I don't know the Denver Giants, that Washington. Really. I mean, uh, the Giants. The, uh, it was that story out of the combine about the Giants yeah. are unequivocally done with Daniel Jones. What? Yeah. Look at the contracts, and and we don't know that 
ours isn't going to be in this conversation <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. postscript. But ju- when you look at the dollars that the Giants and the Broncos set on fire, if in fact Jan- Daniel Jones is done, right? It's, a, it's not close money wise. The Daniel Jones, no, Jones it's not thing. close. But those are huge dollars. Yeah, but at least the Giants, unlike the Browns and the and the seat and the Broncos, didn't give up anything to get Daniel Jones besides the draft pick they got. That's Daniel what, Jones that's what could make the Browns all time yeah. worse. Do you want Justin Fields, Mike? No, I don't think Justin Fields is that good. I'm gonna be honest. He's better than Daniel Jones, no? I'm, I'm a, if the Giants are gonna get a quarterback, I want a rookie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I, I think, think the, that's the Raiders. The Raiders, yeah. I think the, Raiders, the Raiders, the Broncos, and the and the Patriots. So make he's the most familiar sense. with the OC, man. But Antonio Pierce is a former player, Super Bowl champion, and I I, I like the player coaches, right? The guys that's yeah. former players that end up being head coaches. He, by the way, got I think the lowest grade in that NFLPA survey about co- you know when the players really? graded that, which stunned me. Yeah, because no, he, no, 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 no. They voted it was Josh McDaniels. No, I, I read that it was it was uh No. I, no, it was Josh it was Josh it McDaniels was Josh, got the it, F minus. He didn't even get an F. They, they had multiple players put F minus. No, what did Antonio get? He got an F. No, he wasn't in it. This was voted before the season started when Josh McDaniels oh, was the coach. Oh, okay. The players love Antonio Pierce. Yeah, well when I saw that he, that, that it's because they voted it was on Josh McDaniels who they were voting. Oh, on. I didn't know that. Why wait a minute. So they took the survey before the season started? Yeah, they did the survey from like they said August through October is when it's conducted. <laughs> Why did anybody even report on that then? I, I wouldn't know. have even I wouldn't have sniffed that survey. It's the yeah. off season. I know <laughs> I get it, season. but my God, like they was like, know, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna hold this to February. That's the bill the bills <laughs> are <laughs> fast as a The Bills headlines. have been trying to get under the cap. They just cut one of their starting offensive linemen. Bills have a cap problem. Deion, uh, Dawkins. Deontay Dawkins, Deion Dawkins? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have a cap problem. Yeah, they do. They do. They didn't cut a lot of good players this offseason. Boy, that's why that loss last year was so crippling for them. Because that their window, you know how it opens and closes. Mm-hmm. I think it, it could be closer to being closed than it is to opening. Yeah, it'd and be interesting to see where Justin Fields end up, though. Yeah, he's gonna be. I, I don't a think he's. As, I don't think he's as bad as like I know Mike is not high on him. I'm not that high on him. But last year, to me, maybe my eyes was playing tricks on me. I thought he had a good season. I last think year. he did. I think he looked better. But the project that they were trying to turn him into a pocket passer, I just think that's a fail. Yeah. yeah. I think when you draft a quarterback like this, Baltimore did it the right way. Baltimore took a guy who, by the way, Lamar Jackson, if you could put, compare his body type to the player he was coming out of Louisville to the player he is now, I give him a ton of credit. He has beefed up that upper torso. Yeah. He was a stick coming out of college. The one thing that I think you have to be all in on when you draft a quarterback like that, why would you take off his cape? Yeah. And that's what Chicago did to Justin Fields. You drafted, a dual you yeah. drafted, you drafted a him dual because that's who he is. Yeah. That's what led to his success. And then they're trying to tell you, it's like drafting a pitcher in baseball who lives on smoke, and then you try to turn him into an off-speed, off-speed guy. I get, wait a second, I guess the Bills did not cut Deion Dawkins because now Schefter's saying he just signed a three-year, $60 million extension. Can you imagine that? Dude, well, wow. Dawkins, Dawkins tweeted. Yeah, Dawkins it was, tweeted out he was leaving. I guess it was a little Yeah, fake-a-roo. Dawkins tweeted out, unless, unless Schefter's wrong, unless Schefter made a mistake and he's signing that three-year, $60 million deal with somebody else. That would be interesting to follow. But that, that's what Schefter's saying now. Uh, next question, guys, as we continue to wait for some more moves to come through. We saw yeah. the Jaguars trade a sixth-round pick for Mac Jones. Just to compare, the Browns got a fifth and sixth for Jerry Judy. The Jaguars gave up a sixth for Mac Jones. The backup quarterback discussion across the league, not just here in Cleveland, is a position that's getting way more attention, notoriety, and, frankly, value from a GN, uh, general managers. Earl tweeted out he thinks it's a top five position on a team now over the weekend. Earl, right? Is that is that exactly how you worded it? Yeah, I say I think as far as the level of priority, I, it's entered top five as far as wow level of importance Earl's and way priority. Out of pocket I think that that's and, way and high. And the reason why I think it's it's top five is because last year, twenty two percent of starting quarterbacks suffered a season ending injury, and outside of the Cleveland Browns. There wasn't many teams that was able to have a sustained level of success. With the once how many backup quarterbacks starters, won playoff games last once, year? Once their None. starters went out, and well, so but, to me, but, but there's a reason. And, and, that, that's why there's adding. Value and so to, to and to me, I think that a lot of GMs looked across the league and said, "You know what? I need to make sure that I have a quality backup quarterback. I yes. can't just have a guy so, G- like in years past. I think I, I think Bulls looking at it a different way, and I would say the wrong way. You're saying, "Well, they didn't win any playoff games last year. Yeah, that's why you need them. Yeah." 
the, because they all the backup quarterbacks. Well, it's the same lost guys. What do you, what, you no, know, so here's my here's the yeah. way I'm looking at it. I think we're looking at it from a different point of view. I had said during the season last year, yeah, we are going to see a shift in the NFL in this offseason about how teams value backup quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. In the past, it was like who's la- who, who's out there? Who, I mean, who just get him. Hey, Come we on. drafted this guy in yeah. the sixth round. Come on over here yeah. if we need you. I don't we'll agree that it's been like that. It's been different. It's been based on whether you're paying a lot of money to your starter or not. I agree with I that part teams, of it, but Paul, yeah. like, so as every team does this, they allocate yeah. their assets. So yeah. it's just like a family budget. Right. How much of our income this year is going to be spent on rent, food, and, and down the line is vacation, right? Mm-hmm. Like maybe the sixth or seventh thing you get to mm-hmm. after you pay, you know, take care of all of your primary expenses. And I think everyday living, people now are starting to value a work-life balance more than they did in the past. That's Why? Fine. Because mental health crises are facts. through the roof. That's Why? Facts. We've ignored vacations. Stress-related So, and, and, and I read this, and as I was reading this, this was a couple weeks ago, I read it, how Americans are, prior, are now making a bigger priority of their budgetary spending and how much they give towards entertainment and, and vacation. Right. Travel. Right. And it makes perfect sense, the analogy to the NFL. It used to be bin seven. It's gradually moved up where it's now in the top five for most American families because they've realized they over they over compensated one way to where they're like, well, I got to take care of my priorities first. Then we had our mental health illness was go our mental illness issues were going up, up, up. People weren't taking vacations. They're like, screw this, man. I got to spend more money on my vacation. Mm-hmm. I think with the NFL and their budgets, they've looked at things that they prioritize mm-hmm. as starting quarterback number one, right. number two, a great defensive end. Number three, a great wide receiver. And then down the list, after corner and running yeah. back and safety and linebacker, way down there at the bottom was backup quarterback. Yeah. And I think what teams have realized over the last probably decade is that you have your biggest, it's like building a $5 million house on the Florida coast, but you don't take the flood insurance. But Jay, the bottom line is a lot of the, there were a number of quarterbacks last year that were making no money that played well as backups. Look at Jake Browning, for example. Hell, Joe Flacco. Well, okay. So, like, spending big money on a backup doesn't necessarily get you a better player. It gets you a commodity. It gets you... We talked about the building between free agency and the draft. Yeah. The draft is a put a blindfold on, turn off the lights, right. and throw but the But does it? Because there aren't, yeah. even, there aren't even 32 good enough starting quarterbacks. Well, Mac Jones, did, 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 are the Jaguars taking backup more seriously by getting Mac Jones? He sucks. Here's they what are. they know they're going to get sucks. with Mac Jones. Here's what they know they're going to get. They wouldn't they're going to get a guy that was a take- starter. He's experienced. What do the Browns have? Well, they've got a guy that came out of UCLA with a lot of hype, but not a lot of experience, and it showed. When I, no, did it, so- I don't agree with that. After the, he, I thought he after that first game against Baltimore, which was a tough spot, the next two games he played pretty well. No one was going to say he was going to take us to the playoffs when we were going to win with them. Okay, but you didn't win with Joe Flacco either. You no. can't. The bottom line is, you're, with almost no exceptions, you're not going to win in the playoffs with a backup quarterback. It's so happened. why it's spend not, big money there? Yeah, it, boy, you're making it sound like it's never happened. It's, it's rare. Nick Foles, Nick it's Foles very won the Super Bowl as the backup quarterback. It's rare, but it happens. I, we no, can t- always t- find t- one point. example. You don't t- spend big money. T- to say it's the fifth most important well, position is ridiculous. If they were point. great, they'd be a starter. Right. Exactly. So I think you're comparing them to the starting quarterback, and we're not. We're saying... You have an opportunity yeah. to address your needs with number 33 to 75. Right. Okay? Because there's 75 quarterbacks in the NFL or so. Yeah. You can't get a 32 to 1. Those guys are already in jobs. So you can go and find somebody that's in the upper tier of the 33 to 50. That's what I think yeah. teams want to do. And that's what, I'm and that's what the Mac that Jones doing. move is. Mac Jones I don't is agree a, that that's he's not a great quarterback. If he was, he'd be a starter. I think, but of the of the 33 and down, I don't he's agree. a guy that raises his eyebrows because he's been a I starter. I don't agree. And, I think C.J. Bethard's just as good. I don't think there's uh, any difference. Keep C.J. Bethard out of my any universe. C.J. Bethard, to me, I don't think there's out of any my, difference in him and Mac Jones. I, I, just I think... think Jake Browning La- before I take CJ. But Bradley. last year you would have said, "Oh, that you want this guy or Jake Browning?" You would have laughed at Jake Browning. He never played. How long was he in the Bengal system? A couple of years. I think that has something to do with it too. Okay, so the maybe one you thing give- that I said last year was, yeah. I think the guys that are going to have success are the guys that aren't new to the system, and by new yeah. I mean one or, year one or year two. 
Now, if you've got a guy in your system for a number of years, and yeah. particularly if he's behind somebody who's really good, I feel really comfortable about that situation. The DTR thing, there's still going to be a lot of teams that have backup quarterbacks that are hey. rookies. That's just the nature of the beast or second-year guys. But I do think that after what happened last year with all of the teams that lost their starting quarterbacks, perhaps the one thing that we're going to see moving forward is teams are going to take insurance policies. Well, God, it's $600 a month for flood insurance on well, the Florida coast. Well, where's yeah, the but proof your house that? is $5 million. Well, We don't have any proof of that. We're yet. just having a debate. No, There's no, no proof no. of that at all. We're no. just saying that's, yeah. that's what we think is happening. Right. I mean, we can't have proof yet. We're right. in that right. cycle okay. right now. So once I but see what proof I will of say that, is, of the see. Mac Jones thing, yeah. when was the last time we saw a team on instantly make a move that was a trade where you give up an asset for a backup quarterback? I'm sure it's happened. Who's it's paying it? probably happened. I'm sure it's happened a million times. It doesn't, Jay, who's going to remember that from last year? A backup quarterback getting traded. Bull, I, nobody's no, going to remember that. I just think no, no. Bull has been a little dismissive because when I seen it yesterday, the first thing I said was they're trying to get insurance in case Trevor Lawrence gets hurt. Of course they are. And, and every the team thing, wants what that. What insurance? Right. You can't win with then, Mac then Jones. The they part, know that. Let me ask you this. Do you have a better chance winning with Mac Jones or do you have a better chance winning with whoever their backup is? I don't know. Mac Jones. Get me the Get my, my, we don't know. How do you know? Sure. We know well, not only sure. do we not know. Okay, so but that's never I read something cha- coming Jay, How is that screen. a change, though? Watch. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Watch. Let me make this point. Yeah. I think it was Schefter did this experiment. You guys may have seen it and read about it. Over the last 10 years, they decided. Now, this is dicey because this is very subjective. Right. They took all of the quarterbacks taken in the first round, and they said, hit or miss. Now, that's really tough. That's black and white, and it's not black and white. There are shades of gray in that. Right. Like Baker, I guess now we can say he's a hit, but if we would have asked last year when Carolina cut his ass, he would have been a miss. Alex Smith, seven so years Alex into, Smith his, before, into his career. It, right, yeah. so, it, so here's what, what, the, what the study looked at. Of all the quarterbacks taken in the first round over the last 10 years, only 30% of them were considered by this panel to be hits. So we're talking about probably one of the most difficult positions to project in all of sports, okay? What they're doing, Bull, is increasing their odds from 6% with unknown commodity to 12% with Mac Jones. They didn't have an unknown commodity. They had a veteran backup in C.J. Beathard. How did he do? I don't know. Well, no, we do know. He played like two games. We do know because they... How did Mac Jones do? He was like, he was awful. Right, but here's what they're doing. I, yeah. Again, you're, I think you're conflating. But it you're with, saying this as if this is that a guy's never been traded for a sixth round pick. Bull, we just saw it last year with Josh Dobbs. Bull, well, it happens every year. I'm, I'm I think, think it's happen- It's going right? to happen. Are you more trying to, forward? Are you trying to argue that for the first time in forever, teams would rather have the 33rd back? No. Thir- th- wait, let me just finish. Would rather have the 33rd quarterback than the 55th as their backup? Wouldn't they always prefer that, all things being equal? Of course they would. Yes. But, but here's what's happened. Yeah. Through time and through circumstance, they've lost track of that as a priority. And, Bull, this isn't just me talking. That. Some I, teams I, have. I have talked to a couple of executives, yeah. none here in Cleveland, yeah. in the NFL, that have, when I've asked them about this theory, they said, oh, absolutely. That's happening in real time before our eyes. So what's now, the proof? Now, this was last November. Yeah. Okay, this was in November when yeah. you're looking around going, now, the Kansas City Chiefs that won the Super Bowl, how many quarterbacks did they use? One. Okay. Look at the teams that advanced in the playoffs. They were doing it with their, One quarterback. their starting that's, quarterback. Yeah, and that's that's the way to advance. Sure with it rare is. Rare exceptions. Don't get hurt. But what they, what we've, we've said here on this panel, you yeah. did, Jason did last year before the season started. Well, none of this matters if Deshaun Watson gets hurt, the season's right. over. They can no longer take that approach, and here's why. The window is small. You can no longer take the approach that, well, if our starting quarterback gets hurt, the season's over. That's the same approach as saying, I'm going to build a $5 million not- house on the coast in Florida got- with no flood in- or hurricane insurance, and if Jay, it gets wiped out, it's I a loss. Brown- Let me back that up, though. Let me back that up because I said that yesterday, and I think the Cleveland Browns in particular made that the case, right? When you look at what the Cleveland Browns did last year, I think we can all agree that was the anomaly. That don't normally happen, right? What do you mean, with Joe Flacco? Like, with the five quarterbacks winning all these games. No, with your backups, that is right? absolutely Four exception. quarterbacks, one game. So, he, so here's the thing. This is what I, what I thought about yesterday. The Browns and Kevin Stefanski made it so hard for that to be an excuse. Right. That my starting quarterback got hurt. Yeah. Because I think now GMs, head coaches alike, they're getting together and say, man, 
If I can upgrade my QB two, let me. If I can get a quality dude, so you're saying nobody was me. trying to up, upgrade the quarterback point, too? Boy. Was that no, okay. what point, we're boy. saying? Is because yeah. they were everybody. Yeah. So, when you, so what yeah. I'm saying roster, is every spot is important. But if, I, what we if I'm an owner, is, it's more important now. If I'm an owner, I don't agree, and, and my right. coach and my GM come to me and say, "Well, my quarterback, my star quarterback, ain't hurt, man. What you want me to do? Give me another year." He's gonna say, "Hey." They ain't use that excuse. Build the roster with a quarterback. Build the roster that, around that's it. That's a legitimate backup. Yeah, I, I just now, think it's well, more important than what it was One thing that I think before. you will agree happened. Yeah. There was a stretch where, and I remember vividly, where guys were drafted and five years later they were washed out of the league. Yeah. Remember that? And I'm talking about highly rated first round guys. In Cleveland's case, sometimes they were out of the league in one or two years. Yeah. But the one thing that was always intrigued me about Colt McCoy was there was always something to Colt. There was also always something that was missing with Colt. And I think it was here. And and like uh, like just a toughness. But you'd watch him play and be like, God dang, man. This guy can move the football. And, and teams. That New England game in Cleveland, man, was, was the oh, game. Well, that, 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 that was the one. He was is- worth keeping around where a lot of these guys that were drafted got a second contract that was not a big deal. Yeah. And they were washed out of the league. And I always used to say, God dang, there's no way there's – you know, 32 quarterbacks, and I'm talking about 33 to 64, better than him. But, yeah. Jay, let me ask but you. But the this. league said, yeah, but all we're not going to pay him. All I'm saying is I'm not buying this some sea change and that most – I think it's always been the same way. It's ebbed and flowed to some degree. When you pay big money to a starting quarterback, those teams are still not going to pay big money to a backup. I'm not saying big money. Okay. What did the, what did the Steelers just do? Now, he's going to be their starting quarterback. Yeah. They just got a quarterback. This is why it's, that deal is most scary, and we didn't talk about this. What that deal does for Pittsburgh is give them unbelievable flexibility with the rest of its roster because they're not paying a quarterback. Right. Okay. So I don't, That has nothing to do with this conversation. Well, here's no. why it's interesting. Yeah. When Russell won his Super Bowl, yeah. he was on a rookie deal making no money, right. and the Seahawks had the flexibility to build a deep and strong roster everywhere else with the money that other teams are spending on their quarterback. That's why it's an advantage. That's why... That has nothing to do with this backup quarterback It doesn't. It's, it kind yeah. of transitioned to that. But what I would say to you on the backup point specifically, because yeah. you're you're focusing in on... I'm not saying that teams are going to go get big-name quarterbacks to be their backup. I'm not. I still think that in the NFL, we pretty much know who the top 10 guys are. We also know who 10 through 20 are. Yeah. And 20 through 30. After that, I think leagues have pretty much said, what well, does it matter after that? Because he's our backup. See, I don't agree with that. I but, think some teams feel that way, and some teams are just like, we're spend- we are We only have a certain amount of dollars to spend. Sure. We're spending a ton on our starter. We can't. Sure. Because if he goes down, we're probably not going to do anything anyway. But does I, If it- you're realistic about it. The bottom line is the pool of backup quarterbacks is unchanged. No, it's not. It changes every year. That's fact. Mac Jones is a backup now. He okay. was a starter yeah, last I year. Mean, the pool is. I, I don't mean Pickett not, was a starter I last year. He's a backup this year. I don't mean there's year. not a couple of guys to change. I'm saying the basic pool is mostly the same guys year in and year out. If Daniel out. Jones you know, gets cut, he's going to be a backup I, I, quarterback this what year. Is, but what is? Give me what will prove that teams are taking a higher priority in quarterback. There's nothing to prove. Teams that spend money, way. teams that make moves to get them. I don't think it's nothing and, and, to prove. And when I talk to the executives, when I ran my theory, always make moves to get backups. When I ran my See, that's, that's where I think you're wrong. Uh, in the past, teams that have a quarterback yeah. won't draft a quarterback. Like, wh- when you've got Patrick Mahomes and he's 23 years old and he's going to the Super Bowl, you're not going to draft a quarterback. You're just not. If you're smart, you're going to go out and you're going to find a guy like they did yeah. who once upon a time was a starter, would love to hold a clipboard and wear a baseball cap for another $4 million a year and be a backup to a guy like Patrick Mahomes. So and that's what the Chiefs did for a number of years. It, it was brilliant. It yeah. worked. Uh, got a signing, guys. Oh, okay. Jonathan Grenard. How much and where? Is a Minnesota Viking. Damn. Damn. I'm sorry, Earl. Uh, we'll discuss the Jonathan Grenard signing. <laughs> in one I don't second. know. You know.